Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, as you can tell by the picture, we are going to make a hornet's nest. The reason people have hornet's nests that are fake hanging around is um, because a hornet is very territorial and they will think that there is another hornet's nest and so they won't be around. They will go away when in fact it's a fake one. So, um, the one that you've seen in the picture, um, I actually put some sparkly, I have a sparkle cake, so I actually put that with my brown, which is what I'm going to do today. Um, reason being is I only have a little bit of brown, so um, to not use up all the brown that I have, because I am in the process of making dolls and making hair and, and all that. Um, it's almost like a filler and it's very pretty when it's hanging outside and the sun is glistening off of it so it's very 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 pretty so I'm gonna put these two together so let's hop right into this We're going to start with a magic ring to so wrap it around these two fingers over your ring finger and hold it with your pinky. Come up under this guy, you're going to grab this guy. You're going to drag him underneath and as you're doing so you're going to turn, you're going to pick up this guy over here and you're going to bring him right through the hole. Everything's going to be fairly tight, you have to make sure you're holding it loose. So now you've got your magic ring and your chain one, which always goes with the magic ring. So this can't come undone now. It's done. That's it. Um, I know they're tough. I absolutely love them. They actually, if you can get to get used to doing one, trust me, you will prefer the magic ring over the other way of doing a fake magic ring, which I do show in my other videos by the way. So inside this magic ring you're gonna put six <laughs> six single crochets You're going to pull this closed. So we are going to be working in a spiral, which means we're not shading one. We're not slip stitching. You will need a stitch marker. So in each of these six stitches you just made, go into your first one, well I mean go into all of them, you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around but this first one's always tough so I like to just kind of loosen it up a bit. So each stitch gets two single crochets for a total of 12 but after your first stitch you're going to put your marker. Then you can put your second stitch in there and then all the way around. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet. This is where you can count and make sure that you have 12 stitches. So one single crochet in each stitch around. Just trying to situate my yarn. I think I'm going to have a problem. So 
so that was 12. So before we go any further, this little doodad here, pull it tight, and we're just going to tie a knot. That's it. You don't have to try to weave it in anywhere. Just tie a fairly tight knot down at the end. You know, sometimes it can be difficult to get it down to the end. So if you can't get it all the way down to the end, then maybe just kind of weave it in. But I'm just going to cut it off so it doesn't drive me nuts. So your next round is going to be one single crochet, two single crochet. So we're just doing an increase. So that's your one single crochet. Your next stitch is going to have two single crochets. So that's your increase. Your increase is going to be two single crochets. So then your next stitch is going to get one. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets all the way around. And at the end you should have a total of 18 stitches. And if you've done everything right, you should end at your marker at the end of your sequence. So two single crochets should go into that hole. If you haven't done anything, if you didn't end up that way, then you can fix it in this round. You should have 18 stitches. So you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So therefore, you can count your stitches. So you can add or take away if you've messed up. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So we'll put our first one in. It's number one. Next stitch gets one. So that's two single crochets. And then the next stitch gets the increase. Two single crochets in that space. So one single crochet. One single crochet, increase. Do this all the way around and at the end of it you should have 24 stitches. So I didn't end off with two, I just ended off with one one, so I'm probably short stitches. So the next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. This is where you get to count to see if you have 24 stitches. So I am guessing I'm going to have to fix mine. That's number one.
So I was two stitches short, which I knew, so I just put an extra stitch in there and an extra stitch in there to make it 24. Still don't know how I screwed it up, but that happens. So your next round is going to be three single crochets in an increase. So this is your first one. This is your second one, it's your third single crochet, and then two in this hole for an increase, all the way around. So at the end of it, you should have 30 stitches. So you guessed it, your next row is going to be one single crochet in each stitch around for 30. So the next round is going to be four single crochets in an increase. So there's our first one. There's number two, three, and four, and an increase. So repeat that all the way around, and at the end of it, you should have 36 stitches. There's probably going to be a lot of pause screens in this video. Just to try to squeeze it all in the video. Because it's probably going to be fairly long. It's pretty big hornet's nest. you got to make it actual size for the hornet to believe that it's actually there. I have one hanging. Well, the one of the pictures that you've seen is the one I have hanging. And the one I have hanging outside is working. There's absolutely no hornets around. So this round you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 36. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So that's my five single crochets and then two single crochets in this hole. So you can repeat that all the way around and at the end of it you should have 42 stitches. All right, so I've met you back around here. And we're going to do one single crochet all the way around for our 42 stitches. All right, so it looks pretty silly right now. It doesn't look like it should at all look like a hornet's nest, but It'll all work out when you start stuffing it. So at this point, our very last increase row is going to be six single crochets and an increase. That's one.
that's my six. And then your increase, two in this hole. So continue to do that all the way around. You should have a total of 48 stitches. And then at that point, you're going to do 18 rows of single crochets in each of those 48 stitches. I'm going to put my pause screen up for you. And I will meet you back on the other side. Alright guys, I'm back and I've got all my rows done. So, we're going to start decreasing now. So our first decrease is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. So that's number one. Two, three, four, five. Six single crochets and then your decrease. is two together. Six single crochets, two together. So you go in, you grab some yarn, come out, you don't do anything. You go into your next stitch to grab some yarn and then pull through all three loops. That's two together. So six single crochets and a decrease. I'll meet you back around. You should have 42 stitches. I'll meet you on the other side. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and decrease. Next round is going to be four single crochet and decrease. Next round is going to be three. So if you want to work ahead, that's what we're doing. We're just going all the way down to one single crochet and decrease before you do the, the end of it. So our next row is going to be five single crochets and decrease. So I'm just going to put that up on the screen, um, all your decreases, and then I'll meet you back here after, once we get down to um, one single crochet and a decrease, that'll shorten the video up a bit, and you can just work ahead on it with using the pause screen. And then I'll, um, I'll meet you right back here after. Alright, so I got all my decreases done. Uh, well, I, not all of them. I'm at, um, I just finished my two single crochet decrease. So at this point, we need to start stuffing it so I can close it the hole. So, um, it is just a hornet's nest, but you don't really want bunching. So I'll try to tear your polyfill or whatever you're stuffing it with into pieces. And you don't have to really stuff this really really well. So make sure you really get down to the bottom and stuff that part pretty firm. You kind of want to make a shape, a pointy shape down there. I 
I guess I can still do that. Pushing out. And then it tends to get out of the bottom when I do that. So once I push everything up against the edge, now I'm just jamming it just down the center, the center hole that I just dug. So I'll just still try to keep it not bunching on the outside. All right, so I got some stuffing into it. So, um, from from this point, now we're gonna do one single crochet and a decrease. So you're gonna have to pull tight on this. It's gonna be hard to show you. Hold on, let me adjust my camera frame. All right, that's better. So I did my one single crochet, just trying to pull tight. So I'm just gonna do my decrease. One single crochet, whoops. I did not get all my yarn. And on my decrease. So I'm just trying to squeeze it. One single crochet. Missed a stitch somewhere. So I just have the one single crochet. So if you think you can stick some more stuffing down there, you could probably before we close it up. So just remember that. It's pointy at the bottom, so whatever I just did, I kind of moved the stuffing out of the bottom part. So now I'm just trying to move it all around. Just really, really want to keep that shape of a hive and not have it distorted. Have it crooked or anything. Which mine seems to be a little bit. And some over here. It's so hard to get the shape that you want. So this next round, we're just going to do six decreases, and then we're going to sew the rest close. So try to squeeze it so that you can get this as tight as possible. That's my six time going around. So 
so I'm just going to sew the rest closed. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to make a slip stitch and I'm going to fasten off, but I'm going to fasten off with a tail. It doesn't have to be super long, but you do want to weave in. So you can pull that through, close your knot down, and then we're just going to going to cut my end so it's even. So I'm going to sew with both. It's really hard to see what my camera is filming because it's up so high. So hopefully I'm getting all this on film. So this is your knot. You're going to go right into there and you're going to come out into the next stitch and you're going to do the same over here you're going to go in and out in and out that's your knot so it is kind of wonky in there oops I just pulled on that I don't know what, what it was I just pulled on anyway so pull that tight I don't know why that piece of yarn is loose, but we'll just shove him down there. So once you pull that tight and you close that up, you got a bit of a bump on top here. You can just come across. You don't have to weave this in. So just weave it down into the stuffing and around. Don't pull tight because you're going to get a divot if you do. Just go in and pull out somewhere. So if you go in close enough to your piece of yarn, it won't, it'll just look like a stitch. It won't look like you're weaving. So, let's cut that off. So to make something for the top, so you can hang it, you can use your two pieces. You don't have to use two pieces, but you can use your two pieces to kind of go along with what your, what your project is. So I would just make a slip knot. You don't have to do it this way. This is just how I did it. Take your seven. That's your middle. So kind of go in somewhere near the middle that you can identify with when you reattach. And you can just make a stitch. And then here you can do as many chains as you want for as long of a thing as you want. Actually, here. Here's a piece of advice. I'm going to listen to my own advice. Oops, let me do that again. So go in, make a stitch, and use all four pieces. That way you don't have that just hanging around and it makes for a sturdier sturdier foundation if you can use all four of these pieces of yarn to start your chain I only got one in there so I did 40 because if you're hanging it from a roof or a tree, it doesn't really need to hang, it doesn't need to hang down that low. So kind of trying to make it even where you go back in and reattach. Try to, I know it may not be easy, but just go back in. It's 
hard to see what I'm doing probably. Reattach, pull tight, get this out of the way. And you can fasten off again with a long enough tail because you really want to get this weaved in. It's not something you want to come undone. So I'm going to pull as tight as I can on that knot. And then I'm going to weave this in like a lot. Well, guess I'm not going to do that much because I just pulled on that. So I'm also want to tie a knot. This is just added security. So I'm going to tie a knot. And I'm going to bring that knot down as close as I can anyway. I'm going to cut some off. And then the rest of this, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to take the knot and I'm going to shove it down into that stuffing as far down as I can into the stuffing. So it'll get lodged, that knot will get lodged into the stuffing and won't pull back out. So now you can just move your stuffing around and shape it and stuff like that. But there you have it. Looks like an acorn a bit, but it is I'm gonna to tour the hornets away, fake hornets nest, so that they think that there's other hornets around so they won't come anywhere near you. So yeah, there we go. Thanks for joining me guys and I'll see you in the next video.